You are now watching Believe. Do you believe? We are here with two legends. We got, of course, the legendary Ruben Brown and the legendary Mookie Hawkins. I'm Justice General, and we got a great show for you guys today. Uh, what's going on, guys? How you guys feeling? Good. I'm all good. I'm excited. It's Squish the Fish week. It's Squish the Fish week. Absolutely. Week three, the Bills 2-0. Got a big matchup ahead, a divisional matchup. And speaking of divisional matchups, we're going to get things kicked off with around the AFC East. Coach Mookie, what, what do you think about the, the, the scope of the AFC East uh, as it is standing today? It's early. I mean, everybody's trying to find, a, 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 I guess, a running mate for the Bills, a, a, an actual contender, a, a team that's going to push the Bills. Look, okay, yeah, it's, if, if y'all want to say Miami 2-0 right now is a team that could push the Bills in week three, go right ahead with that. All right? But I don't see no team in the AFC East that's going to be on the playing level as the Buffalo Bills. Sorry, not sorry. Whether it's the Jets, New England, Miami, it is what it is. That's how I feel about it. It's a lot of hype surrounding these damn Dolphins, by the way. And uh, they're going to be in for a rude awakening when that ball snap. I'll tell you that. So you, there is a lot of hype around them. We, I mean, looking at the first two weeks, you can kind of surmise that maybe they're not as good as the Bills. But do you think they're a good team? Who? Miami. They okay. They okay. <laughs> ah, all right. Okay. All right. See they're, now. I mean, I'm, I'm going to jump right? in. They, 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 was, they, they didn't impress me versus New England. Yeah. yeah okay. I, they, they didn't impress, impress you the first three quarters of the Ravens game back. either. Who? They didn't impress you the first three quarters of the Ravens game either. And that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm getting at. In the Ravens game, they was down 35 to 14. And, you know, they finally, you know, played versus busted coverage and things of that nature. We give them that. So they, everybody's looking at that miraculous Miami fourth quarter, but they're not looking at the first three quarters. And that's what I'm going to be looking at because the Buffalo Bills in the three quarters that they played against Tennessee scored 41 points in three quarters. I'm just yeah. saying. That yeah, is a lot. Just basing everything upon three quarters right now at this point. <laughs> they ended the game in three quarters. <laughs> yeah, the last, the last quarter, the Bills was yeah. chilling over there with, with baseball hats and eating hot dogs on, on the yeah. sidelines, you know, in the fourth quarter. You know, Coach McDermott always talk about mm. drinking that Gatorade in the fourth quarter. He's definitely reaping the benefits of that. You know what? I got to remind Coach about that because he said that two years ago. Boy, it sure would be nice to be drinking some Gatorade come fourth quarter. I don't have to worry about what's going on in the course of the game. Now he don't really have to worry about what's going on in the course of the game in the fourth quarter. Until a team uh, match that caliber, I don't see a team competing with the Bills at this point right now. Not Miami. Let me just say that. Not Miami. Mm -hmm. I don't see Miami on the Bills level at this point. Ruben, what you think about the I, AFC? I I see the AFC East as unsettled right now. And I'm going to say this. As well as the Bills look, the Bills look like unstoppable. I have to play devil's advocate because I'm a, uh, I, I play, when I play, I had to look for the weakness in me and the other team. And I would say, the, let's start with the strength in the AFC East. The AFC East is relatively young, even with the old Buffalo Bills who are young. All right. Dolphins are young. Jets are young. Patriots are young. And the one thing that always gets me uh, with um, young teams, the young teams are inconsistent. All right. And that's in the Buffalo Bills' favor because they're the most mature, more seasoned, most well-rounded. They have everything rolling. They're a well-oiled machine right now. But young teams have young, fresh talent, and sometimes it sparks, and, it, you know, it can catch you off guard and win you games. A la uh, Miami beats Baltimore when Baltimore should have won that game. All right? So – 
I worry that these teams in the AFC are actually better than we are giving them credit because we are so good. And I'm afraid that we're so good that, like, look, you you can slip and trip, and uh, one trip in the hurdle race, you lose. You know, you stumble over one of those hurdles, somebody behind you just picked up speed and didn't uh, stumble over a hurdle, and they're going to win the race. So that's the way I kind of compare it right now as it's the Bills AFC to um, – to lose but let me tell you guys do not sleep on young talent in the nfl Tua just showed you you know you turn the boat bills turn that ball over two times in the game like they did against uh um the rams the outcome might be different facing the dolphins who's got some monsters over there that can take the house one in a uh, one shot um so, so you you just mentioned you said the dolphins can take the house in one shot you also yeah. said that you know you got to look for your weakness in other teams right. sometimes and that brings us to our first quarter which is king yeah. i'm sorry keys to victory what do you think the keys to victory are for the bills to not let the dolphins take one i'll kick this one off mook my uh, beat reporter over there. Mook, you know, you know, came a long way, son. You know what <laughs> I mean? You know, come a long way. Me and Mookie met back in 1995, man. That's and we've been down ever since. <laughs> and uh, I never thought Mook would get into broadcasting and, and stuff, but I really? always know you really, knew really, your it's, football. It's just your fault. What are you talking about? It's your fault. <laughs> I know. So I never thought but, I would get into broadcasting. You the one took me down to rec radio. <laughs> With Brett but, back in the days off Gen C. But I brought you because you knew football, you understood it, you coached everything. That's why we call you the coach. And coach, you tell every team that you coach. Now we in the first quarter here, we talking keys to victory. And for the Buffalo Bills, is it, it's easy because they've been doing it and they have to continue to do it. But hold on to the football. No turnovers offensively. Offensively, special teams control the football. No turnovers. Defense, take the ball away. Cause turnovers. Cause disruption. So I would say the keys to victory this particular week, not, un not unlike any other week, it's always like that, um, keys, but this in a different way because the Bills haven't had been in a game where you turn the ball over and then I have to press the score points to get back, get the game back. They've been in the driver's seat when they turned the ball over, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? So, to protect against that uncertainty. Just don't turn the ball over is what I'm saying. So I say the key to victory is nine times out of ten, more likely, all about not turning the ball over. And that's Josh uh, not throwing into tight places and, listen, not trying to do too much. You know, just play your position. Throw the ball where it should. Don't force it in anywhere. We you're not losing, you're not down, so it ain't no need to press anything. It should just be open and throw it where it should go, and that's it. And don't run around with the ball swinging out by your side <laughs> trying to get extra yards. Tuck that joker in and be be conservative. Be boring and conservative. Absolutely. You know? that's, that's what McDermott you know, preaches. He preaches the fundamentals, and taking care of the football is absolutely one of them. Coach, what about you? What do you think the keys to victory are for the Buffalo Bills? Well, how about for the first time this season, the Bills need to start off fast. You know, the past two games, they've been getting off the slow starts. I mean, you look what? at the halftime, 10-10 against the Rams. You look yeah. at the first quarter against oh, Tennessee, 7-7. Well, well, they need to start fast. We didn't need to put together four quarters of complete football. They have not 
been able to put that together. Now, they've been able to put together two quarters, you know, but we have not seen this Bills team, you know, play a complete ball game for four quarters. And if they start off fast against Miami, then we're going to see how can Miami keep up with that. It, you know, we're going to have to – we're going to have to push the issue. We're going to have to force Miami to play our type of game because we know Miami cannot keep up with us, you know, as far as points. So we have to create the tempo. We have to start off fast. And when we start off fast, normally we already know what that means. Touchdown after touchdown to see can Miami match that because we do have a complete defense over there. And on the flip side of that, they need to just get pressure on to it. Uh, once again, put Greg Rousseau on his right side. Normally, Greg Rousseau and Von Miller, they, you know, like mm-hmm. blindsided the quarterback. So what you do? Put Greg Rousseau, six seven, with that wingspan, put him over there on Tua's left side where it's going to be hard to throw the ball over the top of Greg Rousseau. So now when he pull that thing down, you already know Von Miller and company is breathing down his neck. So just some of those keys of victories. Bills need to start off fast, push the issue. And um, just get after to it. You know, yes. everything else is going to take care of itself if the Bills are able to do that. We ain't got to worry about Tyreek Hill. We ain't got to worry about Jalen Rattle if if is um, if if Tua is, is is being pressured, laying on his back. You can't throw the ball when you land on the ground. You know, <laughs> so one Absolutely. person that 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 concerns me though that nobody's talking about is Mike Kosecki. and that's a guy that can kill the Bills. We know how vulnerable this Bills defense is to the tight end. So that's going to be some of the things I'm going to watch out for. How is Mike Gusecki is being played? Uh, because we know on the flip side of that, Mike McDaniel, Kyle Shan- Shanahan, protege, you're going to see a lot of down window dressing. You're going to see zone. You're going to see play action off that. So if they can get some success in their run game, play action to the tight end, that's going to leave everybody one-on-one. You can't help a safety can't help a corner now because you got Mike Kosecki to wonder about, and that's when you would take your shots one-on-one with Waddle or Hill up against Benford and uh, Elam. But other than that, get pressure on uh, Tua and start off fast, and then, you know, we'll see what the Miami Dolphins have to offer if that happens. Real quick, Rue, he just mentioned it. What What do you think about Jalen Waddle and, and uh, Tyreek Hill versus Christian Benford and Kyrie Elam? Waddle and Hill uh, supposedly, well, Hill supposedly is up on the Buffalo Bills, where I don't think that's necessarily true. Yes, Hill's been on winning teams um, against the Buffalo Bills, but I don't think he's solely the reason why the Buffalo Bills lost uh, against the teams he was playing on. Um, Those guys are veterans. We're playing with a guy, a shorter deck, so to speak, not a, as much experience in uh, facing them. So we're going to be susceptible to, you know, miscommunication, young mistakes and things like that. And if I'm not mistaken, guys, y'all back me up. How many injuries we got in the DB uh, area about three guys. Yeah, you got Dane Jackson. You got Poyer, who's been playing around with a foot injury. You got yeah. Mike Hyde, who did not practice again today with a with a neck injury. So and right Poyer now, may Dane come Jackson back, and, and and Micah might not play. Yeah, and so we we definitely down two guys. Definitely down two guys. <laughs> so it's going to be a tall task for. Uh, the rest of the defense to make sure those guys that are new to it or don't get as many reps at, at playing um, with the defense, that they're in the right place at, at the right time. And that's all they need to do. And that's the beauty of uh, McDermott, them talking about fundamentals. You know that they're going to just get the fundamentals because that's the main weapon they need to face these guys. Waddle. And Tariq going to throw everything at you. Don't act like – I'm not um, 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 ignorant enough to say, oh, no, they're not that fast. No, <laughs> I know they fast. <laughs> I know they fast. Absolutely. But I'm like Marv Levy. Uh, I'm old enough to show, know my shortcomings, and I'm also old enough to know how to overcome them. 
So with our coaching, we'll be able to help coach those young guys to make sure they're in the position so they won't uh, fall susceptible to some, you know, just some veteran trickery. And look, we know that's going to happen. And, and I just want to see from our DB staff facing these guys, I want them to see to maintain them or they're going to get theirs, right? Yes. But we can't let them get six touchdowns. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> no, you know? I, don't, I don't think they're going to be going for – sixes yeah. or anything like that but it was yeah. it was interesting you mentioned you made a great point about how you know you you have to make sure that you know your shortcomings and also how to remedy those shortcomings yeah. and that brings us to the second quarter uh coach who is the player most impacted by von miller's influence the whole damn team <laughs> Offense and defense. <laughs> the, whole, the whole team. I mean, when you get a guy, when you get a when you get a straight dog, aka hot boy, aka just Hall of Famer. You know what I mean? When you get that type of guy on your team, he automatically is gonna elevate your game because you know it's just his makeup. You know, he 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 plays the game, he only knows how to play the game a certain way. And if guys ain't on that level, they need to get to that level. And right now, just him being his presence alone is just taking that team's mentality, their mindset to a whole nother level, you know, because, hey, this is a guy that, that's, that's, that's been there twice and won it twice. And he's fresh off of a Super Bowl. So, you know, to, to absorb all that knowledge and, and how to get there and what do it really actually takes, the little things, this guy is there. Uh, as a sponge that you can ask and you know it's exciting to know that you can go to the next locker and talk about that to that guy you know it's not like i'm calling you from the city he's in this guy is actually on my team so he's giving me that that you know it just gets you excited just talking about man when is a super bowl and with the the mystique of everything that's happening with the buffalo bills it's just like come on man this guy's telling me we're going out here we're playing like it and the score is emulating that early and often with this Buffalo Bills team. So he's definitely impacted everybody and made everybody elevate their game. I mean, when you look at what this team did in training camp, they fought 10 days straight. 10 days straight. I can't I I, I can't recall that ever happening on, on this Bills team, let alone any damn team in the NFL that it was a fight. 10 out of the 14 days of training camp, it was a fight going on with these guys. And I think that training camp right then and there just created the makeup of this team going forward because it was competitive as shit during training camp. And when you got so many alphas out there, that's what's going to happen. But when they play against another team, that's what you're really out there seeing. So Von Miller's impact has definitely influenced this team at the right time you know, when they're on a Super Bowl run. So he's 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 impacted everybody, even the coaches. Real, real quick, I know you talked about his influence on the football field and what he adds to this this look like what is a juggernaut of a team. Can you kind of speak to what you've seen, you know, from him in the locker room and how the players are reacting to his presence uh, from who he is as a person? Listen, Von Miller is in Buffalo. Like, Von Miller, like, like he's been here. He just got here about five, six months ago, but how he's just, just looking, just, I mean, he, he's, he, he's already used to being here. And that's kind of like crazy to say that, like, like Von Miller is here and he's just, it's normal. And, you know, he's acclimated to this, to this thing. He, he, he knows his way around Buffalo. You know, I, I got the opportunity to, you know, to hang out with those guys after the game Sunday and, Man, to see how the camaraderie and how those guys all stick together. When I move, you move, just like that. That's just how this Buffalo Bills team is operating. I mean, the guys have embraced him like he's been on the team since, you know, five years ago. You know what I mean? It seemed like Von Miller got here when the Bills drafted Josh Allen. That's just how the field and the rapport is in the locker room with this team. Absolutely. Uh, Rube, what do you what do you think? Who do you think is the player most impacted by Von Miller's influence? You know, uh, I would say off the top, 
and I'm learning a little bit more about Vaughn's impact as it goes on. But just on the surface, I can see that Greg Russo <coughs> is uh, immediately impacting. You see that in that sack that um, transpired this past week and uh, the other play that he had in the first game. I think that communication that he's, that he's having with Vaughn out there is um, is very crucial for his young development because because remember he's still a young guy, you know what I mean. So that's that's huge um, because veteran players at Bond's caliber, you know, they're the type of players that can play on any team, no matter where where they are. He's a he's an all time player, and um, smart people soak up knowledge that they spit out. Just by walking, they don't even. Vaughn necessarily doesn't know that he's teaching these guys all the things that he's teaching. He's going about his business, and so for a young guy like Greg to see that and and hear the conversations that Vaughn is having to prepare, it's only making uh, Greg better. Now, overall, the team you write, me Mookie, everyone is, but probably. Most important, and you wouldn't think it, but it is Josh Allen. Josh Allen is getting this is ideal. This could not have come at a better time for Josh Allen. Josh Allen is a young, emerging leader in the NFL. And how much guidance has he had at being a leader and also being a leader of a winning team? None, right? He has none. But he has to get it from somewhere. And who does he get it from? Can he get it from an older quarterback that's never won, that's been on the bench all of his life, and Josh is running the show? No, he can't get it. He got to get it from another big dog, you know? And so in comes Vaughn, who's another big dog that has won and gets, you know, he's not like Vaughn doesn't just get defensive respect. Vaughn gets offense, defense, special team respect. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that forces Josh to say, because it could go, it could go horribly wrong for the organization. If Vaughn comes in here and he's much more powerful as than a leader than Josh and kind of subdues or, or, or shadows him. But yeah, put Josh down a little bit. Josh still has to be the that front guy, but he needs some power with him and somebody that he can turn to and say, Hey, can you get that defense together for me over there? Tell them guys over there, you know, and also a guy over on defense that can tell Josh, hey, man, we got a good what's happening over there, right. you know, so two leaders can have that conversation and that type of growth together. So that's where I see Vaughn helping over on the defense side, obvious young players working with him, hearing from him and everything, but over on the offensive side. It's uh, Josh. Josh has really benefited big time from, you know, the success that Vaughn has and how Vaughn knows how to be successful. And to your point, you talk about how Vaughn is a leader on the team, but not trying to overshadow Josh Allen. He says it in the interviews all the time. Mm -hmm. Josh Allen is the leader of this team. He never tries to overstep or make his presence bigger, even though it is fairly large, probably the maybe the second biggest if not the biggest on the team like you know so it uh it, he absolutely uh does do that as well i would say here i'm going to answer real quickly i would say it's your guys like Kyer elam and christian benford who benefit most because you know they're starting on <laughs> an, in, on a super bowl caliber defense on the number one defense in the in the in the league you know this isn't just like a super bowl team where the quarterback is is the best quarterback in the league and the defense is eh, you know, this is a, a damn good defense and they are, you know, uh, they have to take over the spot of an all pro corner and Dane Jackson, who's been playing extremely well. And I think mm -hmm. having a guy like Vaughn Miller, you know, just make that defensive line so much more, you know, few, just, 
just just so much more electrifying. Uh, it allows them to see see maybe some some uh, setups and and schemes that maybe they weren't prepared for. Make a couple mistakes and the quarterback isn't able to see it because he's getting hit. You know, so right. I, I think it you know benefits them greatly. But um, that's going to move us here into our third quarter because we we talked about it. Who is more to prove? You know, the offense or the defense. So, Ruben, we'll start with you. Who do you, who do you think has more to prove, the offense or the defense? Oh, uh, hey man, I'm I'm always it's the early part of the season, and even though they have had seemingly the most success, but I still think they have the most to prove. And I go with offense with my call for who has the most most to prove. Um, I I piggyback on a, something that uh, Mook said earlier where the Bills haven't gotten off and played that complete game yet. Um, it's there. It's in them because you see each time they started the game off, they've gone down and scored. Right. <laughs> you know, so I know from an offensive standpoint, all the years that I studied and practiced and, and we – we would make our first 15 plays and stuff and, and envision how we want to start the game. I don't think the Bills have fa- saw any adversity or any issues with their first 15 plays that they called the last two games. I mean, I think they smoothly, if you if I'm right or wrong, Justice, each game they've opened the game and gone down and scored. Yes, they have. Each game. That's huge. Justice, tell me. Trust me when I say that. That is humongous. I played 13 years. It's very hard to do. All right? They done done it two weeks in a row. All right? Now, the punters hardly had any work. All right? I think, you know, they've gotten off to a great start and they haven't had a complete game, but you know, just the the confidence that they build by going out there and scoring in the open is like, all right, yeah, we can do it again, you know. And I'd like to see them, you know, commit some more. And, and this is me sneaking my O line stuff in here, and it's all about running the ball with me. I would like to see them sneak in more uh, run plays that are design run plays that aren't passing plays that are run plays and that are design run plays. You don't like the RPOs? (laughs) No, no. And and I don't want a run play where Josh is designed to run it. I only like to see Josh run if things break down and he's got to get up the field. I want to see, because at the end of the day, this means something. Can we get our other players off? You know, that's what they got to prove. Yes, Josh can pass to five different receivers in the first half of that last game, and and everybody caught a touchdown, it seemed like. But – we have not seen them hand the ball off on a regular basis and have a good drive sustained by I called a run. You know what I mean? I know we got the weapons guy. I know we can kill it. But we are going to need to turn around and hand that ball off to the, one of them guys in the backfield one day. And we're going to have we, – we can't wait to the last minute – to start building up to that. It starts in the early part of the season. And that's what I'm looking for. That's what they got to prove to me. They have to prove to me that they're committed to a real running game, not a pretend running game. Not a, 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 listen, RPO is great, but I call it uh, the wishbone. All right, because that's what our RPO is. It's the old school Oklahoma wishbone. You know what I mean? The option to hand it off to the fullback, 
to the split back and then the tail back. I forget the different names of the backs. It was a half back, full back, and tail back back then in those days. And the quarterback, and he turned around, he got three options and made it tough on a lot of people for a long time to do it. But they stopped doing it. Listen to me, people. They stopped doing it because nobody wanted to get their quarterback hurt. So you you want to see the Bills? <laughs> excuse me. You want to see the Bills run more, uh, more effectively at least, and a and committed why, run, handoff run. Yeah, right. That's why you think the offense has more to prove. Coach, yeah. what about you? Who do you think has more to prove? Me. Well, I agree with Rube on with the offense to that degree. Run the ball. You know what I mean? Rube, Rube likes to mow the lawn, obviously. You know what I mean? There's been times <laughs> in games where you heard him screaming to the coaches, run the damn ball. Yeah. I have not seen an offensive lineman do that since Ruben Brown. We need more guys like Ruben Brown to say, run the damn ball. I wish he was here when Dave was here, so he could say, oh. run the damn ball, day ball, okay? Yeah. But Bills do need to establish some type of run game. We know what we're getting with Josh Allen in, 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 in the passing game with Diggs. Hey, it is cold as shit right now in Buffalo, it is. okay? Yes, it is. So you're going to have to run the football Thanks. late in December, these later months, okay? We know Josh can still sling it in the cold and all that stuff. But at some point, you're still going to have to establish your run game. I asked Coach Dorsey about that uh, yesterday, actually. Uh, you know, how does he – sometimes I'm like, well, do you get in those if it ain't broke, don't fix it moments because the passing game is just working so good and so often and y'all scoring points, you just caught up and still calling pass plays and not implementing any run, you know, with that tempo. And he was just saying, it's just, you know, basically the flow of the game. So, so many words he told me, yeah, I did get caught up in the flow of the game, just passing the ball because it was working. So if, if my passing game is working, I'm taking what they're giving us and we're just dinking and dunking down the field, then obviously I'm taking my shots. But you have to blend some run in there, right? You have to keep teams off balance with balance. And the scary thing about it is the Bills are blowing teams out still being one dimensional so yeah. you know that's the scary thing about that when they bring the run game to the party then you're going to see a much more effective bills team that's going to be super scary at that point but to me more to prove still goes to the defense um i think that right now everybody is 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 preying on the weakness of the bills corners that that's the that's a key to victory now everybody's just looking at that they're not looking at Von Miller in this eight-man rotation that the Bills got on defense that's going to go up against this Miami Dolphins only five-man up front offensive line. So if that's the storyline there, yeah, the Bills got something to prove. Can the Bills prove that they could still do the same thing that they doing to the Rams, the same thing they did to Tennessee with two rookie corners out there with these dynamic speedy receivers? All right, so yeah, Bills have more to prove. Now, if they can do that with rookie corners against probably probably the two one of the two tools fatter, the fastest do wide receiver duo in the NFL, I don't see a team beating this Buffalo Bills team, and I know it's only week three. But if that happens, the Bills are pretty much <laughs> I mean, what else could you put in front of this defense at this point? If they go out there and dominate Miami's offense with two rookie corners out there, who who's going to beat this team? It's going to be when super scary because there's back always too. rumors of improvement for this Buffalo Bills team on a week to week. Absolutely, <laughs> and I, I, I'm with you. I would say, I mean, through two games, the score is 72 to 17. It ain't too much you can say about who needs, you know what I mean? But if I had to say somebody need to prove more, I would say the defense only because of the 13 seconds thing. Uh, they gotta, they need to play lights out, you know, to kind of get that monkey off their back. And I'm gonna shoot the RPO some bell room. It, look, if I'm <laughs> Josh Allen and and I got a, a call run play and Stephon Diggs is on the side versus a rookie quarterback playing 10 yards off, I'm all right, out. all right, you know yeah, yeah, out. yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so that's all. I'm but, down. Um, 
So speaking of those rookie cornerbacks, we were just talking. There's a little bit of a battle between them going on. Coach, you want to you wanna give us a little bit of insight on this? Yeah. I mean, you know, nobody's not talking about how Christian Benford is just starting over the number one draft pick, Kair Elam. Okay. Um, I went on and said that Christian Benford was going to be the sleeper in this draft class. Right now, I mean, man, I, I'm I'm sitting up here like a like a guru. Uh, no, Sadamas, right damn Mookie Damas up in this <laughs> month. I, I don't know if you remember, Coach, but we was, <laughs> we was on uh, ninety six point five, and we both we both were saying this, and you know, yeah. people people been on me too, like, oh yeah, you called it, so yeah, I, I'm I'm right there you with know, you. I mean, when you look at the overall production in Christian Benford's fourteen interceptions, I don't care what school you went to. When you got 14 interceptions on a college level, I'm definitely yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. yeah, that's that's you know, that's one of them things like you know, I can remember back when uh Steve McNair was coming out uh into the NFL and everybody was knocking him because uh he played for Alcorn State. All that changed when he showed up to the senior bowl. When senior bowls got Auburn, Alabama, mm -hmm. Pitt, Michigan State, all of these things, and Alcorn State, everybody was watching Alcorn State's best play <laughs> go to practice. They weren't watching Alabama. They weren't watching Notre Dame. So um, good players rise to the top, Justice. It don't matter where you are, where you play. Michael Strahan played H HS. BCU. He didn't play at with a Southern Cal, Notre Dame, or any of those things like that. So, um, and I'm really proud and happy that the organization is in a position with the DBs that they don't have to play uh, favoritism to the money or the draft position to get the best play out of their players out there because. That's one thing that a lot of organizations don't have the luxury to do because whether it's talent or management doesn't understand how to, you know, emotionally handle a first round draft pick or a top draft pick not performing as well as someone they brought in later. You know, there's a lot of egos that go on out there you got scouters that scouted these guys and everybody put their name on the paper and said i believe this before we decided to draft them so now when things don't go as they plan they start looking at were, were you the one that signed off on this too mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what i mean be like uh yeah coach but coach you know i got the guy that's it up there too <laughs> the guy that's starting too i got him mm -hmm. so it creates a great environment, number one. I think it, it's only going to challenge Elam. If Elam is the type of guy that everybody thinks he is or should be being drafted so high, I think this challenge will boost him up, which only increases the depth of, of the uh, position. He could take and things could go bad. We don't know, but hopefully the kids got what it takes that's going to be a part of the team or and not fall away from the team due to expectations. And I, I speak mm -hmm. up, uh, to this, guys, from experience. I know I'm long-winded, but uh, I was drafted first round, and my first day in practice, they were laughing at me. They were like, they, we spent what for what? <laughs> hmm. We we drafted who first round this guy no way and you know just having that happen behind my back and around me was enough to be like oh no oh no you're not gonna get this one <laughs> <laughs> uh, my daddy didn't fatten no frog for no snake you know I ain't going out <laughs> like that so uh, I, I I got it together but that at that air. How it had to help me, and so you know, and I also the competition, the other players, and the potential you know, my playing time was enough to get me going and get me over that mm -hmm. hump. But I do know of players that it has affected, and they could never come 
be, be, be them original selves. I, I, I can think back to a player on the Bills, uh, Eric Flowers. Mm. Uh, killed it in college. Arizona State was going to be the next best thing. Built like a, all outdoors, great shape, speed, everything. He got there, couldn't get it done. And the pressure and the talk and everything, I think, affected him in the long run. Great guy. Everything, just football didn't go as planned. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully, and, and I, I believe this is a great environment happening back there for those DBs. So I think we're going to see some great play opposed mm -hmm. to we, I, I think at, over time, we're going to forget who was drafted first and who was yeah. drafted <clears throat> next. It's just going to be like they're good. Absolutely. I right. have to agree. Oh, and, they, and they are. Though. And they are. They're both 6'2". Yeah. Right? So they got, they, they, they're very rangy. Uh, they have the speed and physical, and they, they have excellent ball skills. So it's not your – I don't know. I want to say your average NFL cornerbacks because, you yeah. know, again, these guys are, are, are big, physical, and fast. So yeah. I think that you're going to have both of them out there this week due to the fact that Dane Jackson, you know, was carted off. I don't think he's going to play this week. He's been wearing a red non-contact jersey in practice. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> it doesn't look like he's going to play. So you're going to have those two rookies out there. Uh, so that's going to be something to definitely to watch and see how those guys go out there and compete versus Waddle and, 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 um, and Hill. Now, Elam played against Waddle in the SEC. So mm -hmm. there's some, you know, familiarity between oh, those two guys. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be an interesting matchup when, you know, they lock up. And on the flip side of that, Kair Elam was drafted for Tyreek Hill because we needed a bigger, faster mm -hmm. corner that could run. All right. So we're going to get our fair evaluation out of both of those yeah, guys because we'll they're going to play a lot. We'll see how it goes. So, so, Coach, let me ask you, before we get into Neil Down, I, I want to ask you, what does a successful game for these two cornerbacks in this big game look like when you're facing a former All-Pro and maybe a future All-Pro? Well, <clears throat> just trust your instincts. Trust your ability. Don't worry about who that person is you're guarding. Just play within the confines of the scheme. Play within the best of your abilities, and everything else is going to pretty much take care of itself. You know, don't just get caught up, call it that's Tyreek Hill. You feel that you got to play a certain kind of way. No, just play your game. Everything else is going to take care of itself. And, you know, you, you got teammates out there. As long as they're doing their job, he only going to have three seconds to throw the ball. <laughs> Absolutely, 100%. All right, guys, uh, great show. We're going to go ahead and get into the kneel down. This is where we kind of cool down. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get into our segments for tonight. We're going. It was his idea, and I thought it was a great idea. So, of course, we're going to start off with the legendary Ruben Brown. we got Ruben's rundown with Ruben Brown. So why don't you let us know, Ruben, what's on your mind? What you thinking about? My, my What's on my mind is the fact that the Buffalo Bills are headed down to Miami and play the Dolphins in one of the most significant mm -hmm. games uh, in a long time between the Miami Dolphins <laughs> and the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> For a long time, this has been a brutal, vicious rivalry. Um, um, I can remember all the way back to the Brian Cox days and the fights with him and Carwell Gardner. The fights would um, go out into the parking lot. Now, it doesn't have to be that anymore um, because Josh is Josh and the Bills have been, uh, you know, knocking on the door in the playoffs for some time for the championship, and the Dolphins have been making noise by, you know, unexpectedly beating good teams at times, you know. So here we are uh, with these teams finally being, I would say, relevant on the NFL landscape again and showcasing this long-term rivalry. For many a years, like I, I was told before I, I got here, 
the, the Dolphins ran rough shot over the Buffalo Bills. And then finally the Bills got their chance and the Bills ran rough shot. And then I would say the years I were there, we were doing a little tit for tat back and forth, back and, forth and the programs were rebuilding. Um, and I think for me, my whole rundown is we're watching two emerging uh, teams, two young teams, young quarterbacks, Josh older than Tua. But I think right now Miami and Buffalo are probably the um, two of the most exciting teams in the NFL today. And the Dolphins and the Buffalo Bills have always been uh, one of the most exciting rivalries uh, in the NFL and historically. I mean, it's an AFC rivalry. It's not like the NFC. The NFC, obvious reasons, have longer rivalries. But the AFC and the Dolphins go back a many a years. Um, we have respect for those old greats, um, but we don't love the Dolphins. Um, and so, you know, that's just what my rundown is about. This is more for the fans, more than being analytical about the game, saying who's going to do this or who's going to do that. This is this is squish the fish time. You know what I mean? And uh, it is a, a big stage. At any other time, this game may have been Monday night. Just if the Bills hadn't already played, scheduled it Monday night, with the way the Dolphins are uh, set up and playing right now and the way the Bills playing right now, they would have purposely moved that to a primetime game like that. This is, uh, this is going to set the tone for the season. Whoever wins this will have the upper hand in the playoff race and home field advantage. And the Bills look like they the for sure thing to, to get all of that. But I'm sure the Dolphins are chomping at the bit to be the ones to tarnish the Bills' reputation. And in, in these games, guys, rivalry games, you know, a lot of times we say, oh, it don't matter, it don't matter. Oh, yes, it does. Yes, it does. You know, you can have an undefeated team going to face a team that has no wins. And if it's a rivalry, all bets are off. <laughs> any given Sunday, anyone can win. So I that's the only thing that gives me pause about the Bills this week. I'm speaking to the fans out there. I give them a little pause. For the Bills just going out and for me just saying, hey, the Bills going to go out there and just trounce them. It's a rivalry game, guys. <laughs> so so I want the Bills to be conservative. Don't turn the ball over. Put it in the end zone when you can. Punt it. <clears throat> kick the field goal. No turnovers, Buffalo. And we win the game. That's, a, that's it. Uh, squish the fish. We can't stand them. You know, we don't even like the weather in Florida because it smells like mildew down there. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Smell like somebody's mildew clothes. They left them in the washing machine. They ain't take them out. You got to take the clothes out. Now you take them out you and you're going to try to dry them. Now, how you going to dry mildew clothes? You know what that's going to smell like all through the house? Florida. <laughs> that's what it's going to smell like. <laughs> so, oh, so that's my rundown, Florida. <laughs> Y'all can take that. Take that. Take that. Take that. <laughs> All right. We moving from one legend to another. We got a moment with Mookie, with Mookie Hawkins. So, Coach, let us know how you feeling and, or what you feeling and how you feel about it. Well, I mean, I do kind of agree with Ruben, but I don't want him to be conservative. I want them to be aggressive. All right. Let's – it is what it is. I mean, let's, let's, let's not play around with the Dolphins. Let's see it. Can the Dolphins play catch up? All right. Let's let's see if the Dolphins can play our game. All right. They scoring at rapid pace. They scoring twenty eight points in one quarter. Let's see if they can go toe to toe with the Bills. And we all know that they're not going to be able to go toe to toe with the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> I am sorry. The common denominator is that defense. Miami's defense. They're not even being talked about. 
they're not even being mentioned, this Miami's defense. The only thing they keep talking about, they got the two lockdown corners in Jones and Howard. So nobody cares about that. Stephon Diggs has torched those guys year in and year out since he's been a Buffalo Bill. Gabe Davis has torched those guys as well when he's given that opportunity. So come out aggressive. You know who you are. You don't have to change your game to know for nobody. Last time the Bills did that, they lost against New England. So understand who you are as an offense and go out there and, and, and be aggressive, score points, force the action, let the defense do what they normally do. And this is going to be, like Ruben said, there's going to be salmon patties all over the place yes. at, at Hot Rock Cafe on sale. Yeah. Hot, hot. <laughs> All right. What so, you got, uh, General? I mean, you know, yeah. I got my own little segment or whatever. So we're gonna go. That's with, what's uh, up, General. <clears throat> uh, so for me, well, I just I take a look at uh, what the Buffalo Bills have done. Did it? Did it play? Yeah, I did. I saw it. Oh, okay. I didn't see it. All right. Well, whatever. I, I take a look at you know what the Buffalo Bills have done. In the last couple of times they played the Dolphins, uh, it was like 45, 40 to zero, 35 to, to like 17 or something. I, I can't get think of the scores off the top, but I know that Josh Allen has absolutely obliterated this team anytime he's played them. Uh, seven and oh, in the the you know, uh, each of the uh, last seven games he started versus the Dolphins. Um, and even when he didn't play versus the Dolphins, the Dolphins played our backups. They had an opportunity to make the playoffs and they lost. They played our backups and lost. You know, uh, of course, this is a completely different team. None of that really matters. But I, I like I like to liken it to, uh, well, you know, trauma. Right. You, you watched your dad beat you all your <laughs> life. We watched Tom Brady beat us all our life. So now we take it out on our children who are the Dolphins. And now we're going to beat them anytime we come across them. Uh, so I, I want, you know, the Bills to go out there and do exactly what they did to Tennessee and to Los Angeles. Because of the three teams, I feel like the Dolphins is the worst team. Um, you know, I, I'm not sold on to it. Four touchdowns and six five hundred yards are great, but I mean, come on now. If you look at the tape, like they weren't being covered at all. Like if you're an NFL quarterback, you should be able to make some of those throws. So I don't want to take anything away from him, but I'm just saying, don't be surprised if Tua has like 117 yards passing this week. Like it, it's it's not gonna go yeah, the way yeah. Dolphins fan thinks it's gonna go. So Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports contests and events with first to market odds and lines. Now find reviews and news for every league, including major league baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bet online continues to be the top online resource for all sports information from live in-game betting props and futures. Head to bet online today or use uh, your mobile device to join today and make your first sports bet. Now, use our promo code BELIEVE50 to receive your 50%. Welcome your bonus on your first deposit. Now, bet online is where the game starts. All right. All right. Did, did you fellas have any final thoughts before we get up out of here? Hey, man, all I say is keep pushing what you're pulling because, you know, the Dolphins. They're up and coming team, but they ain't coming too far. They they <laughs> the bills the bills are bills is that all that and then some. You yeah. know, the bills is that see I'm read it out today. I'm read it out. You know, all, all my homies back out there in Pomona, you know what I mean, Pasadena, we were we wear that red and we can get a little flossy flossy. <laughs> <laughs> you remember our boy Flossadina? Flossadina, I was just with Flossadina last yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. Justice, that's our old uh, running back, Derek Holmes. We called him Flossadina. Oh, okay, okay. You All know right. what I mean? Right. His, he was from Pasadena, and he was so flossy. My brother nicknamed him Flossadina. <laughs> wow. He over there from from the Rose Bowl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that was that class right there, that ninety five mile. Yeah, that yeah. Was what the best ever. Yeah. That class right there. That was that's my crew right there. But yeah, uh, I'm just, loving it, guys. I love what we're doing, man. Let's keep it up. 
Absolutely. We want to thank all of you guys from, you know, all over the place who have supported, you know, this podcast and everything. We can do this without you guys. So uh, for Ruben Brown, Mookie Hawkins, I'm Justice Rafford and uh, go Bills.